OK, so now we've got a way of measuring how spread out the data is that looks at all of the data points, the standard deviation. However, um, if we're thinking about a problem that is in context, so in the majority of cases when you're trying to find the standard deviation, you're looking at a sample of a larger population set of data. Okay? And the reason why you might want to find the standard deviation of that data is so that you can estimate what the standard deviation is of the population. Now, if you just have five numbers, so in the previous video where I introduced the standard deviation and I say, right, what's the standard deviation of those five numbers? Then dividing by n, uh, dividing by 5 as part of the calculation makes sense because you're trying to find how far each of those five data points is away from the mean on average. But as I said, in context to context problem, that's not really often the case. Sometimes it is. Um, if you've got um, your class set of results of 20 pupils' results, and you want to find the standard deviation of that class, then yeah, dividing by 20 makes sense, dividing by how many bits there are. If, however, you were looking at, um, let's say you wanted to determine the standard deviation of the heights of elm trees in the UK, then you can't physically measure all of the heights of all of the elm trees in the UK, okay? You'd have this huge set of data, okay? Absolutely huge set, so I'll represent it like, like this, okay? Loads and loads and loads of bits of data, far more than you can ever actually find. You can't, like, go out and measure all of the heights of all of the elm trees in the UK. It's just physically impossible, okay? So what you would do is you would instead take a sample. So you would pick, let's say, well, you'd pick these randomly, okay? These would be picked randomly. Okay, and there's my sample of the data. Now, if I find the standard deviation of those ones that I've picked, it will tell me how far away, on average, each of those data points is away from the mean of that data set. Okay? However, as you can see, just by me randomly picking these data points, the standard deviation of this set of data is not going to be the same as the standard deviation of the whole set of data, okay? And in all likelihood, because I'm randomly selecting uh, each data item, the likelihood that I pick out extreme values, so either very tall elm trees or very short elm trees, is actually quite small. So, the standard deviation that I get from my sample is likely to be smaller than the standard deviation of the population, okay? So, whereas the standard deviation of the sample, okay, which you could work out as sigma x, which we know was the sum of the squares divided by n square rooted. Okay, so that would be the standard deviation. So if I write it out in full, that's the sum of the x minus x bar squared over n square rooted. Okay, that would be the standard deviation of the numbers in the sample. But if I wanted to get an estimate, and what is referred to as an unbiased estimator, for the population standard deviation, 
then I would instead use the sample standard deviation, which is represented by Sx. Now, we got Sx and Sxx here. They are two very different things. Okay, Sxx is the sum of the squares. Sx is the sample standard deviation. And to counteract the, the fact that the uh, population one will be larger than the sample, instead of dividing by n, we divide the Sxx by n minus 1 and square root it. Okay. Now you might be wondering, well, where's that minus 1 come from? Why would we pick my n minus 1? Why not n minus 2 or n minus 3? Well, it's one of those things at this stage in statistics where um, you've kind of got to come to terms with the fact that there are some bits in stats where a number has been chosen arbitrarily because it's relatively easy to work with and also because it gives a suitable answer and has been shown to be suitable from uh, examples, from previous examples that have been made. Okay, so um, dividing by, we don't divide by um, n minus 0 0.99995, which might, in the grand scheme of things, be more accurate, but n minus 1 is easier to work with. Okay, so it's just one of those things where it has been shown to be to give a better estimate of the population standard deviation than dividing by n minus two would. Okay, so this sample standard deviation divides by n minus one, whereas the uh, population standard deviation. So if you're just looking at a population of numbers, of distinct numbers that my sample is, then it's just divide by n. Okay, so there is this subtle difference. If you are asked for the sample standard deviation, you are looking for n minus 1, divided by n minus 1. If you're just looking at the standard deviation of a set of numbers, then you divide by n. Okay, now there is a proviso that goes with this, um, for those studying OCR, MEI, and I'm going to cover that in the next video. So if you study OCR, MEI, then please watch the next video so that I can clear up any misconceptions with the terminology.